Be annoying. <laughs> I'm here with Tamara, who writes the Tattle Tales dating blog for the Jewish Journal. And uh, how did you go about uh, deciding to write a dating blog? Um, well, uh, I really didn't want to. <laughs> I should start with that. But um, I, I am a struggling writer, yeah. and I had I've been writing for a magazine for a little while, and trying to get my name out there. Yeah. And I wrote something on Yom Kippur. Yeah, I saw was, that. That was just meant to be a Facebook post for my friends. Right. And I guess some people thought it was funny enough to pass around. And before I knew it, the editor of the Just Journal contacted me and said, you like to blog for us. Um, we talked about some ideas. And um, some he said that dating blogs happened to do very well. And the one they had with someone a little bit older with kids, that yeah. was a little different. So. You didn't tell him about your kids. You just got that on the download. <laughs> All six of them, no. <laughs> or the three divorces. Oh, right. <laughs> right. Yeah, Off the record. Yeah, they're all the orphanage. <laughs> yes, exactly. You don't want them to get in the way of your blogging career. No. Maybe, maybe after 35, I'll look them up. I still got a few good years left. He did what was best for them. <laughs> exactly, exactly. He just went into a life position where you could really give them the love they, and attention that they needed. They don't want to be on my blog. I had this job where I was driving kids around once and uh, I started blogging about it and the, the, the mother said, could you please not blog about my kids? Oh God. <laughs> yeah, it's it's awkward to blog in real time about people in your life, yeah. I found. I didn't yeah. realize how difficult it would be, Yeah. but it's been it's been tougher than I thought. Yeah, so tell me about what's, what has surprised you in the process of blogging, so that's one thing. Um. Well, I definitely, I'm not typically a very private person. I tend to live pretty publicly. Um, that ma mainly for my family, sort of, is the type of family that will do anything for a joke. Right. So <laughs> anything that we thought was sacred, if right. there's an, if there was a way for it to become funny, right. all of a sudden everyone knew about it. So I wasn't used to necessarily being that private about my personal life, but um, blogging about everything as it's happening, it, it took that to s so much of a further extreme that it's yeah. it's been a challenge. I I normally never feel inhibited when I write. I don't hold back at all, and this is the first time probably where I've written anything where I'm thinking to myself, I'm nervous about writing this. Should I write this? Um, so I, I think I'm trying to strike a balance with that by delaying it a little bit, not necessarily writing about last night, right, today, about, about but giving it a week, week or two. Yeah, 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 it really, it's much easier. Um, and I've definitely excluded some things where in my writing in the past I've never excluded anything. So it's... The three abortions. <laughs> now there were only two. Sorry. No. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, the, it's funny, but I think the things that are m most important to me are what I get, you know, most nervous about sharing, if I really like someone. Yeah. But you, I mean, you come from a background of blogging about porn. How, yeah. how did, was that hard when you started? Do you have any advice for me? Let's come back to that, because I don't want to say anything that might affect anything that you might say in the interview. So, okay, yeah, I am you're welcome curious to come though, back. just yeah, for we your are advice. Welcome, yeah, we are, you're welcome to come back to Okay. That. But often if I like start giving my views, often I find it shapes an interview in a particular way. Fair and, enough. And so I don't want to like, uh, like, like what, what you might say, but I, okay. I, love, I love the sound of my own voice. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so feel free to come back at that. Or, um, any particular blog posts have you found most difficult to write so far? And any of those would be easiest? Um, it's easy to write about people I don't like. Yeah. <laughs> I really find that easy. Too. <laughs> um, I just, I know they're going to hate me and I just don't care. Yeah. Um, yeah, writing, <clears throat> writing about, um, writing about, 
I, there, since I've started, there's been one person in particular that I really liked, and I found myself not writing about him. So, and I haven't done it yet. Smart idea. Um, yeah, so that's probably the hardest. Um, I also, I mean, dating I'm pretty okay about writing about. When it gets to sex specifically, um, I, I'm not interested in writing the kind of blog that is like a girl's how-to or, um, you know, a, a Jewish Cosmo guide to, right, right, you know, sex. right. <laughs> Um, <laughs> 33 things yeah. to blow your, mo your lover's mind before exactly. you dump it for. Exactly. <laughs> How to that's, make Sukkot really special. Right. That's someone else's purview. I, I'm... Loving the sucker. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm holding off on that. Who Maybe... But you did write a reasonably racy blog about uh, sex addiction. I did. I think that was your funniest <clears throat> blog, yeah. Really? Yeah. Thank you. Um... You know, I wrote that mainly, I, I was able to do that, first of all, because it wasn't necessarily my own experience. I wasn't saying, here's a list of people I've slept with and what happened. <laughs> you know, it was more tongue-in-cheek um, reference to people in sex generally, so when uh, I was able to yeah. get a little bit more broad about it. And I did, um, I mean, I kind of did really have a bone to pick with the um, proliferation of sex addiction, especially in you know celebrity culture. Yeah. Um, not that it isn't you know a real serious addiction, but with anything you know to start labeling everyone as a sex addict, I just found so ridiculous. Um, and then I read this article in the LA Times about the booming business. Yeah. Of sex addiction, yeah. which I, I'm just very incredulous of these spa treatment centers. Um, so yeah, I, I, it started. I, I started to feel like if if you could complain about your infidelity and just say I'm a sex addict, what else could you complain as an addiction? And think of how many hookers you could purchase for the price of one of those sex addiction clinics. It's true. Like, you'd think you'd find enough solace out there that you could I buy know, yeah, they're like $10,000 for really short I mean, you really could have a lot days. of t good times for 10000 I hear. <laughs> I've been told. Of course, of course. <laughs> That's the one on the street. <laughs> I imagine That's what they say too. on Pico Boulevard. Seriously. Oh, God, for Pico Boulevard, you'd probably be living like a king for 10 years. Yeah, that was that was a pretty funny blog. Uh, did you watch Sex in the City on that show? Um, yes. I'm not the biggest fan of it. What'd you think of it? Honestly, being one of those girls in their forties on that show is like my worst nightmare. <laughs> like, if that's I mean, I've gotten this comparison also. Someone else just wrote to me and said, you know, they love that you're like the Jewish Carrie Bradshaw. And I was like, that's okay while I'm in my 20s, but yeah. I don't, you know, her life is like the antithesis of what I want, mind me. I don't want to be writing about having lots of sex with different men at 45 in my struggling writing career and how, she, you know, she can't get her life together. And it's just so, some of it is so self-indulgent and so, I mean, I, it just reminds me of those women's magazines, which I just have no patience for. You don't like Cosmo? I, I love mean, Cosmo. <laughs> Do you really? That's a like guilty um, addiction. I love all those sex tips. And I think some of the articles are so well written. Like they talk really? about w worst dates and one girl talked about getting arrested by the cops, you know, in the back seat of a car with a date and the cop turned out to be a dad. Oh my god. <laughs> or going on a roller coaster and then throwing up on a date. I thought that was pretty cool. I mean, I, I was never That's into not those. Love. Magazines. Really? You never liked Cosmo? I, I like begged my parents for a switch subscription to The New Yorker when I was like 17. So if wow. it wasn't in there, um, I wasn't. Now that being said, I do write for a fashion night like magazine. Yeah. And I do write lots of articles that yeah. are sort of similar to. Um, in, for instance, you know, I write a lot of fashion articles. I have one coming out where I sort of write one of those guides about how to be. How to find out whether or not you're really a true prep or 
or want 